Hi, I'm Barry Sahajian. This video tutorial is about going up and down the neck using major 7th, minor 7th, and a diminished scale based on the major scale. From each degree of the major scale, building chords from the root to the 7th, whether it be major or minor. C major 7th, D minor 7th, E minor 7th, F major 7th, G 7th, A minor 7th, and B diminished. Before I go any further, I'd like to remind you, if you haven't uh, yet subscribed, please do, and hit the bell and leave a comment and give me a like as well. I'm producing videos at least once a week and on all different subjects, and uh, today's subject is a little bit of theory and a lot of technique, I guess. So let's get started. I'm going to go through all the chords I play, step by step, each one in the uh, key of C. And that will be from the first degree, second degree, third degree, fourth degree, fifth degree, sixth degree, and seventh degree, like I explained in the introduction. The introduction was the line I will be going over in this tutorial. I played it fast just to make it sound exciting. And um, so I've done, I, I, in order to get across the neck like that, I used a couple of little techniques or tools, if you'd like, and I'd like to explain them. I use a shift, uh, a pivot, a slide, and a stretch. That's how I get across the neck, and it seems, and it goes smooth. Now, if you were to try to play all of these major seventh chords, just up the neck from the root to the seventh, it would sound like, you know... Not too exciting, and difficult to make anything melodic happen. So what I've done here is I play the C major 7 right like that and that will be the normal way of playing it in position but instead when I get to the major 7th I sort of use a pivot there so I can go into the D minor 7th this is the pivot I'm on the 5th 5th fret of the D string and instead of using my ring finger I use my index finger and you can see it's a little cramped there that's what I call a pivot you know this is something uh, similar to what key, uh, keyboard players use all the time when they go and they when they're going up the, in the neck and they kind of skip over a finger and they pivot and so I'm kind of applying that technique on a bass so now I, I I'm on my index finger here and I'm on the major seventh of the C, and I slide up a half step, and it turns out to be the seventh of the D minor. Now, I instead of ascending, I descend here. So now you have... Sounds a whole lot better than going ascending on both of them. Now, we need to go to the third degree. Okay, we're on the third degree of the C major scale, and this would be an E minor 7 arpeggio. And we're going to play the E minor 7 arpeggio ascending until we hit the octave, and the octave becomes the major 7 of the F major 7, and we descend. So here it is. I'll show you the fingering. E minor 7th, and then F major 7th going descending from the major 7th. I was just playing around. You can see, just using two of these together you can make a lot of a lot of sound in, in to, to make a nice solo or a nice fill when you're in accompaniment it just there goes uh, there's so many uses for this not to mention that you you're getting a nice workout on um, the arpeggios going up the neck and you know if you play them for a while they become part of your vocabulary and they just kind of come out even sometimes unexpectedly when you didn't give it permission to come out I love that. I heard that from Chick Corea. He said sometimes he a note 
he plays notes that he did not give permission for his mind to play. That's, that's great. I love that. <laughs> anyway, so we are now, we just went down from the F major 7th, so we go over to the G with our baby finger. Now, now comes a pivot. So baby finger on the 10th fret of the A string, which is G, and we pivot and we use the index finger to play the third. Normally, it's played in position like this. And a lot of you know that already. So we start with the baby finger, index finger on the third, which is a B, fourth finger on the D, and then when we hit the F, which is a flat seven, normally you would use your middle finger, use, you're going to use your index finger because we want to slide up to the next arpeggio, which would be an A minor. So we're here, we slide up to the, to the G, which is the flat seven of the A minor chord, and we descend. Flat seven, G, E is the five, C is the flat three, and then the root. So I'll play it from the G again. Now, we're right in position here to play the B diminished chord next. Your B is right here, right under your third finger on the 14th fret of the A string. Here comes another pivot. So we play one, which is a B, D is a flat three, F is the flat five. Now we pivot again, use our index. So on the fifth, so that would be once again. Now we are right in position to play the last arpeggio, which is a C major seventh. Once again from the B diminished. You saw that pivot, right? One more time. Okay, that's all the arpeggios in a C major scale. Now that we've completed going up the neck, playing from each degree of the major scale, minor seven, minor seven, minor seven, major seven, dominant seventh, minor seven, and diminished, and we play the arpeggios, alternating by ascending on the first arpeggio and descending on the second arpeggio. We did this, of course. Now I'd like to point out a few other things we can do with this exercise to make it more useful and make you hear it better. So now what we want to do is descend on the C and ascend on the D. Sounds different from uh, So I could start it from here and go ascend the neck and uh, play it the opposite way. Descend and ascend, switch it around. But it, rather than do that, what I do with this exercise is I play it all the way up to the uh, 15th fret and then I go down. And when I go down, I reverse the order of ascend and descend. That gets you to hear it the other way and it extends the exercise. So that's, that's one consideration. I'm not going to do that on this lesson. I'm going to do it on another lesson. Right now, I'd like to give you a small preview of what it sounds like using the Guitar Pro software. How I extend this exercise personally, I'm not saying that you should do this, but I would take that exercise and I'd bring it through all 12 keys. And um, it would be a routine, and I've got it down so I can do it in a minute or two. And it really it gets you all over the neck. I won't ask you to do that right now, but you could try it. But the next, next thing I do with lines and exercises I learn like that, I turn it into triplets. Now that gives you a whole different flavor. And I'll give you a little preview. One and a two and a three and a four and a one. If you get this exercise down, 
What's going to happen is you're building your vocabulary and your ear at the same time to enable you to play this spontaneously from any place that you might be when you're, when you're actually going through your lines or improvising. I'm going to go into some of these things on the next episode. And uh, right now, go to my Patreon page and I have an extensive amount of uh, practice material there. I've got the, uh, the, the Guitar Pro version. That's one way to practice. I've got a drum track and me playing the first part of the lick and three minutes long for the drum track, slow, medium, and fast. And also the tab all on one sheet you can print out. So there's a lot of material. If you want to get serious about this, I made it real easy for you and uh, it's enjoyable with the drum track. It's the same drum track I used on the introduction. Anyway, that concludes this episode. Uh, come back sometime. And thanks for stopping by.